Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 289 of Ask Dave. In today's video, we're going to answer a question from one of our Augies, and the question was this, can you use an oscilloscope to measure the power output of a transceiver? And the answer is absolutely yes, and I'm going to demonstrate that. Now, we note that an oscilloscope is fundamentally a voltmeter. And yes, it's voltage versus time, so you can get a waveform and look at it and so on. But in addition to just looking at the waveform or showing its shape, an oscilloscope can actually measure uh, the voltage, as is the case with my Regal uh, DS1054 Zulu scope. It gives a nice set of measurements. So what we're going to do is put a test setup together for how to do this. Uh, I'm going to use the micro BITX as the transmitter. We'll do CW and a dummy load. I've got a good dummy load that's an old Heathkit Cantenna. And we're going to use an MFJ watt meter and SWR meter just to be absolutely sure that we've got a nice one-to-one -one SWR going into that uh, artificial dummy load. Let's take a look. We're going to measure the power output of a QRP rig using an oscilloscope and a dummy load. Now, the test setup that I have here assumes that we have a 50 ohm resistive load. Uh, the scope results, remember the uh, waveform, we're going to have to remember to convert that to RMS, and then we'll do some calculations to get from RMS voltage to uh, the power out. This is the test setup. I have the micro BITX right here. Uh, this is a QRP rig. It comes out of India at hfsigs.com. We're going to do it in CW mode, so I've got a little key here, and that way the transmitter is either on or off. The main signal path is from the micro BITX to the MFJ849 SWR and power meter, and then from there over to my old Heathkit Cantenna dummy load, which is a very nice uh, and well-behaved dummy load for HF. Now there's a tap up here, and I put a high impedance input from the tap to the Regal DS1054 Zulu oscilloscope, which is a 50 megahertz oscilloscope, and we're going to be working at 40 meters, which is 7 megahertz. This tap is very short compared to a wavelength, and we're not going to be changing impedances around a whole lot to use that. This is uh, what the test setup looks like. We've got the micro BITX here. Note that version 1.6 now comes with a nice case and a nice display board. Uh, the BioNO battery is powering the micro BITX, and here's a little MFJ key for the micro BITX. Here is the watt meter. The Duracell battery back here is powering the watt meter, and then the output of the watt meter goes up here to the Cantenna, which is a gallon paint can with a 50 ohm uh, resistive non inductive load. And the whole thing is sitting in mineral oil so it can dissipate heat. This thing can stand up to 200 watts uh, pretty much continuously. Over here is the scope. There's a tap coming out of the back of here going to the scope. And the scope is all set up so that up here at the top we do all sorts of measurements on the waveform. And you'll see uh, all of that in a moment. Here's a quick close-up of the... Uh, BI, micro BITX, and we're using the simple little straight key. Here is the MFJ watt meter. By the way, this is measuring um, uh, under transmit. I'm, I'm transmitting while taking this picture. It's a one to one SWR going into the dummy load. It's a perfect load. 5.92 watts is uh, what it measures. I've got it on the HF setting. This is the Cantenna. It's 50 ohms up to uh, 200 watts continuous. I've had this for many, many years and it continues to work just fine. There's really nothing in it to wear out. 
This is the tap on the back of the micro BITX. It's a BNC connector. The power direction comes out of the micro BITX here and goes off over to the right uh, to the dummy load. Over to the left, it's seeing a very high impedance load uh, at the um, scope and the piece of coax is so short that it relative to 40 meters that it does not uh, introduce any weirdnesses. This is what we see on the scope. You see the sine wave down here. What's more important are a couple things. One, we can measure the frequency here. Uh, the actual carrier is 70729 or about 7.073 uh, megahertz. And uh, we've got our voltage peak to peak here. And just under this is the voltage RMS. Now, if we take just the screen and invert it uh, so that it's a negative, uh, it's, of course, instead of yellow, we get blue, but we can see a lot better what's going on here. The two measurements that are of interest are the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, which is measuring as 52, but more important, the RMS voltage, which it is measuring as 18.2. Now, if you take 52 and uh, do the conversion to get to RMS, uh, it'll be actually slightly more than this, but there is noise on the signal. And what the scope is measuring is the actual peak and the actual peak, the average peak and the algorithm that it uses to convert to RMS gives you this value here, which is a little bit more accurate. And I'm going to take this value, 18.2 volts, and we're going to go from there. So with that value, let's compute power. Again, we're assuming a 50 ohm load, and we're pretty close. Uh, this is Ohm's law equals IR. We can divide both sides by R, and we get I equals E over R. Power, of course, is the voltage times the current. We can substitute CI equals ER, so we can put E over R here, and we have power is E squared over R. This is the power law. And then the RMS voltage, we measured at 18.2 with R is 50. So we have, calculating E squared over R, 18.2 squared over 50, or 331.24 over 50 is 6.62 watts. So that is the output of the transceiver. Note that the MFJ 849 watt meter said 5.92. That is a difference of 12%. Now that's not a big error considering ham radio test equipment is not laboratory grade. However, when you get in to start talking about a, an oscilloscope, and a pretty popular one at that, that's much closer to a lab instrument. So I'm going to believe the oscilloscope more, that my power is really closer to 6.6 .6 watts rather than 5.9. Some closing thoughts. The oscilloscope is a good way to measure power if you have a dummy load you can trust. Don't use an antenna as a load because the antenna will have some reactants and that will throw off the measurements. Uh, I was also asked the question of what voltage would you be putting across the oscilloscope if you did this for a 100 watt output. Well, 100 watts is V squared over R and considering R is 50, we can multiply both sides by 50. So we get 5,000 equals V squared, or V equals 70.7 volts RMS. Now that's 100 volts peak or 200 volts peak to peak. A lot of oscilloscopes will go up to 300 volts peak to peak. So yes, you can use the scope to measure in these circumstances, but do be careful because 300 volts of RF power will give you a nasty bite. So bottom line, yes, this method works. Well, there you have it. It is absolutely possible to measure power out even on a 100 watt rig with an oscilloscope. And it will give you a more accurate value of the power out to a dummy load than you might get uh, just using a watt meter or something like that. However, note that a dummy load and your antenna are two different things. So how much power you actually get out to your real antenna uh, depends on a lot of factors like SWR, uh, the uh, impedance of the antenna, whether it's matched properly, uh, so on and so forth. 
So uh, you could measure the voltage out to a real antenna, but real antennas are weird looking things. They've got uh, reactants in places we don't expect it and you won't get an absolutely accurate uh, reading, but you can come close. Usually what your watt meter on your rig tells you is within 10% and that's probably good enough. Thank you very much for all the support during the period of time during the pandemic. I've tried to bring you frequent videos and I hope they've been helpful. If you'd like to support this channel, go to dcastler.com support. Also, please subscribe and all those things like that. Please stay safe, help each other, be a great citizen, and until we next meet, 73.